Hang on to your hats, my friends. Hang on to your hats. <laughs> Welcome to Kathy Chat. I am thrilled to have each and every one of you with us now live or certainly on the replays that continue to happen all the time. Thank you a million percent. When you get to meet this person, you're going to be thanking me for absolutely finding her and having her on this Kathy Chat. Tanya, Tanika, I am exploding with excitement to have you with me today. <laughs> I'm excited too. You're amazing. I'm sitting here sharing. I'm making sure I share. <laughs> oh, I know. And that's why I was going to say, this is the coolest thing in the whole world for me, honestly, um, to have you on the show today. Kathy Chat was born several years ago because I love to see what God's going to do and edify my new friends and things like that. And when I met you, I'm going to let you take that part. But when I met you, I was just like, Lord, this is like, this is like Jesus on fire. Take it away, my friend. Tell us about Tanya Tanika and tell us everything. Oh my gosh. We're going we're gonna to be on this podcast for three days. How's that? <laughs> hey, three days, three nights, you know, <laughs> death, burial, resurrection. Let's go. I know, seriously, we, we can do it. <laughs> we can definitely do it. Oh my gosh. I met you on Alignable. Yep. And, um, uh, I loved being around you. You were so amazing and uh, so consistent. And then where I really loved you was when I went into your LinkedIn posting party. And I was like, man, this girl is the bomb. I loved being able to see you in your element. Like that's something that just gets me so excited. And uh, you're such a great facilitator and speaker. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And then um, I got blessed because uh, somebody which love everybody, but uh, somebody wasn't able to come into the chat. And so I had to go with you inside of the Alignable Network uh, and have some time with you. And it just kind of went from there, right? We've absolutely had some fun. <laughs> and you've said you several times, which means now we're going to flip it to the Tanya <laughs> Tanika that I want to talk about, but good try. Nice try. You asked how we met. Okay, fair. Fair, fair. Um, all right, Tanya Tanika. Who is she? Uh, <laughs> once upon a time. Once upon a time. Yeah, once upon a time. Um, why did I just think about the three little bears? Jesus. <laughs> the porridge. Oh, the uh -huh. Okay, Very anyway. Sweet. Um, so yeah, I have always uh been an out, out of the box, multi-gifted, multi-talented um person. Um, never really quite understood how to put all of those assets and facets together uh, and went on this really big, long journey <laughs> and still going on it, uh, being able to bring those things together. Um, got into business when I was younger, uh, saw that I was pretty much psychologically unemployable, realized <laughs> that every time I went into a company, it was like, I'm rearranging this, changing this, uh, working this system out, saying this is not out. That does not order. surprise me. <laughs> right? So I'm just like, mm. um, and I always found myself, no matter how quiet I was, no matter how much I'm like trying to like hide and like peek through the window, um, I always found myself, even though I was administrative, leading all of that, I'd find myself in a leadership position. I'd find myself teaching, speaking, running things, loving people, uh, caring for people. And it's like, you know, eventually you just can't run. Well, I mean, you can, but. Um, <laughs> He'll find you, trust me. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, I could go into, I've gone into different locations in different places thinking I was just going to like not be seen or found. And lo and behold, um, I got a hold of somebody. and. Um, didn't know who they were in the spirit until uh, I got a hold of them. And then it was like, bam. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I can't hide. Right. Um, but I love God uh, with all my heart. And has your uh, faith journey been always, have you been a believer always? Has Jesus always been in your heart or when did that happen? Wow. Good question. So it happened when I was actually a little girl. Okay. I didn't quite understand totally, but my, my Titi, she used to, in, uh, I lived in New York and uh, she used to take me on these, uh, these journeys. She would take me to church and I'd be the one that was sitting or standing on the uh, chairs. Okay. And I'd be screaming and worshiping and then I'd be dancing in the aisles and going crazy, which is pretty much who I am right now. Um, once I hit into worship, 
it's so hard to contain myself. I just lose myself. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it started then. Um, I did go into this up and down roller coaster, just, you know, my parents, uh, believed in God, but they didn't practice. It wasn't like going to church. It wasn't anything. My mom ended up giving her life to Christ um, later on in the years in my 20s after watching me and my life with God. Um, that's kind of always how it's been um, with my family, uh, my sisters, like like things like that. Like, So it was just really my lifestyle and just who I am. And I'm not perfect to say the least by far. Uh, but, but yeah, um, you know, I had my own little, what is it, come to, oh my gosh, what is his name? Damascus Road Experience. I've had my own little experiences and things like that. Um, I tell God I'm on auto rehire all the time. And I'm like, you know, God, I don't want to do this. I quit. And then um, I'll go for a walk and I'm like, God, this great idea came. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's just, I know. daughter. So I call it auto refire. <laughs> Auto refire. There you go. I like that. Auto yeah, refire. I'm always like, thank you, Lord. I, we're all finished now and I can close all these chapters. And he's going, <laughs> that's hysterical. Yeah. I, it's kind of like what you say. I love how you say it. <laughs> You're just like, no, God, I, I, I just don't, I don't do that. I sell water. Like I, I don't do that. And I tell the God does thing. I'm like, he's like, go into media or go into, no, 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 God, I, I don't do that. Like I'm behind the scenes. I do this. And he's like, uh, no, you're going to do that. No, but I don't do that. <laughs> and then uh, you go and do it. And it's like, oh my gosh, like it was all in his strength. Like that he poured into you. And it's just like, oh, okay, God. I'll Isn't do the it coolest today. thing, honestly. And just like you said, um, he decides I'm an author and a speaker and all this stuff. And I said, I sell water machines. And he goes, no, you're going to write another book. And I'm just like, Lord Jesus, you're not understanding. I sell water machines. And he's just going, here we go. And the book, literally, the books in my case have been written in, in seconds compared to some people that are on a long journey of writing. And I'm just, and then people ask me, can you please tell me, show me how to write a book? And I went, I really can't. Jesus wrote these. I, yeah. I, I really can't even give you a structure. And Jesus wrote my books. He just let me sign them. And that is just the, the most amazing thing in the whole world for me. Now, Tanya, um, again, friends, thank you for joining us today on Kathy Chat. I'm so excited. I can't even stay in format with this lady. But when you, when you realize that Jesus was navigating all of your pieces and the Damascus Road and things like that, were you receptive or did you did you fight along the way or did he put dynamic people in your path? How did, how did that road look? Girl, a little bit of everything. Um, I did accept. Um, I think one thing that I had to, sh that there's had to be this really big, um, I'm going to say pivot, uh, which is like this about face. I had to look at him, not as God. I had to actually look at him as father. When I learned him as father, things changed. The intimacy changed. Uh, but I needed healing from that. I needed healing from that father aspect. So it was really difficult for me to have that thought process, right? Uh, father's leave and all the thought processes that came along with father. And so uh, that was one pivotal moment for me. Uh, then once I kind of went into this, I it was it was great. I had this journey. It felt good. And then I got to this place where I actually started having desires of my heart. Like at first it was like, oh my gosh, God, everything is about you. And then uh, because, you know, it's the, the hype of I've just given my life fully to Christ, uh, not just in my lip, but in my heart, like everything about me. I, I, I hear his name and, and, and I just, I just want to weep. Uh, I think of who he is and I just... I just want to serve him. I want to please him. I want to make him happy. Like I just, right. And, and that's where I was. And then I remember looking and being like, I kind of have this desire in my heart, Lord, <laughs> you know, I have this thing that I would, I would really like, um, would you give it to me? Like, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and then I would hear visions and dreams and, or I would see dreams and visions and and then I would uh, get prophetic words 
and um, of many different things and not seeing them come to pass. Uh, that's when stepping into that leader role that it became more difficult for me uh, because I was like, wait a minute. At first it was like, you're coming through. <laughs> and then eventually it came this next phase where I could pray, lay hands on people, do all these things. And the very thing that my heart craved was the very thing that God had me pray for people and they would get a release like that. But year after year, I wouldn't see it. And so it became to the point where I felt like a puppet because I said, God, I'll just be a puppet. Forget it. It's what it is. Like I started working on, you know, just, I did it because I love God so much, but the, I don't, I don't know if it's the hope. It was, it was something in it that I just said, I started feeling like the very thing that I was doing for others or praying or how God was working through me was I wasn't allowed to have it. And it became a teasing. It became such a tease for me. And there's moments I'll go back to that. Um, I still sometimes have these little touches of, of that. And I kind of wake myself up like girl, <laughs> uh, but yeah. And then it became a whole lying my life down, like laying my life down. And um, there was this thing that I wrote uh, and, and I read it and I, and I put, don't fight for your life, but lay it down. No one has greater love than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. John 15 and 13. I said, I am full of awareness. Love, love by laying my life down more than I fight for it. I, that's my thing. I will love um, by, sh by laying my life down more than I choose to fight for it. Live within the stillness, please, so to speak, and operate from a seated position. And, uh, you know, um, that's what I ended up, I have it here written, and um, among some other things, and that's what I just keep repeating to even to myself now. And um, yeah, just, just saying that there is no greater love. Like I could show you, I could tell you, I love you. I could do all those things. But if I don't choose to lay my life down for you, if I don't choose to spend the time on the phone with you or go meet with you and lay down, maybe my wants to go do something for myself or whatever, um, not to the point where it's so sacrificial to where it takes over everything in your life. And there is no you because you got to refill. Um, but being wise. Uh, so yeah, there was, I think we all go through that, but as leaders, we don't talk enough about the, the true raw real of what we go through. Um, you know, I'm a lover, I'm a, I'm a giver, I'm a nurturer. Uh, and as I grew in my feminine nature, it increased more and more were, were given like onto that. And so there's many that I pour out to, uh, and I had to learn um, to do that, right? And not be so emotionally attached to where I'm like, oh, but this is relationship. It's like, no, not all our relationships. Some of them are just, you're giving the seed, you're doing planting the seed you're or you're giving the water and God's gonna give the increase. And so I had to learn the people in my life and all of that. And again, still a learning process, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't always easy. It's still not easy as you grow in leadership and, but it's a part of the journey. So. Do you feel that most of your meetings, most of your encounters with people mm -hmm. besides the alignable piece, um, for those of you who are uh, new to the alignable topic, this is a dynamic platform with opportunities for networking and masterminds and certainly leadership training calls, things like that. And there's almost, as of this recording, almost 10 million members. And I have not met them all yet, but I'm definitely working on it. But do you feel with your work on the different platforms that you're involved with, mm -hmm. is most of your talking, like most of your 
leadership meetings, are they business related or Jesus related? What do you consider business? Um, I sell water machines and I'd like you to buy one and sign up. <laughs> um, it depends on the environment, but I always change it to Jesus, uh, whether it's overt or covert, right? Uh, so I, I choose to place myself. I choose to lead in certain areas to create that environment for Jesus uh, to be glorified but also to have that business ministry, all of that, because your, your purpose call us on all of that. You can't separate any of that. Right. And so, you know, teaching individuals how to lead with love, how to market with character, integrity, authenticity, you know, and, and having that foundation of love. So it's like, how do I separate that? I, I can't separate if I'm, you know, talking about business, I can't separate that because, you know, if I'm talking about how to market or how to build your business or whatever, how, how can I do that without bringing, you know, all of the aspects and attributes of who God is and ensuring that it's the foundation of that. So, yeah, I mean, I just, uh, I allow the conversation to flow. Uh, I'm I'm slow to speak and quick to listen in that instance uh, where, you know, I'm just careful. Uh, there's some individuals I don't say much to. I just ask the Lord that my presence make a difference. Uh, maybe give them peace for a time or validation or encouragement or something like that. But uh, yeah, I noticed that in the business realm, uh, a lot of individuals are so focused on talking about themselves uh, that they actually are not there to serve another or see how they can connect. And that's a fear based. They need to make money. They're in desperation. So those are red flags to me. Uh, it, it starts to reveal some things to me. And so uh, I, I know how to place people in that vicinity. Right. And so, um, yeah. If that is the fear-based part and you're chatting with someone and you can tell that they're fear-based and I call it lack versus abundance mentality. Mm. Um, I have to sell a water machine right now. And it's like my, my correlation with Jesus has been an easy one from a standpoint of naming my business miracles with water, which is what he told me to name it, which still, every time I see my logo, I'm just like, Lord, you are cracking me totally up. <laughs> Every time someone sees that logo, they go, what is miracles with water? Every time. And so it starts the conversation. And I always say, God drives my bus. Yeah. And so if you've got a fear-based um, lack versus abundance person in your, in your meeting, mm -hmm. how do you gently let them know that this is all Jesus? How do you, how do you transition that? Hmm. Sometimes I do. And sometimes I don't. Again, we have to understand when, when are we sowing a seed? When are we watering? And when is like, you know, it, to God give the increase. Uh, one always walk and be in love, right? Uh, your responses, your, your tonality, the tenderness, all of those know who you labor with, know, know who you're talking to. But uh, for me, whenever, so the absence of love that's what brings the fear, right? So fear is just a love deficiency. And Ooh, so that's profound. Fear is just a love deficiency by Tanya Tanika. <laughs> so yeah, like you know, um, if you're if you're in the dark, what what do you do? Do you do you keep going like this? Oh my gosh, I'm in the dark, looking for the light. You know, like that's it. It's like you just turn on the light switch and boom. You can see everything. So it's the same thing. You're in fear, turn on love and boom, you don't operate in that. Right. And so it's not a fear problem. It's a, it's a lack of love. And, uh, I have to identify one, do I have the authority in that person's life and the favor and the permission to even be that in their life? 
to even speak into their life. If they, if I'm sensing that I don't have that, or I always ask permission, I don't move forward. Uh, Jesus wasn't always welcome, right? So uh, that's how I look at it. And I look at that as also testing the situation as we call like testing the spirit, that type of thing. So there are times that I don't say anything, uh, but it's funny because I would, because of my patience and the kindness and how I operate, they're like, something was different about you. Or they'll say, wow, they, she was so peaceful. Or, or they'll see that uh, I never talked about myself. And they're just like, hey, I never actually got to learn about you. Uh, sometimes it'll be where I'm, I do have that gateway. And I, I do I have permission to share something with you? And then I'll ask them a question. Have you ever considered this? So that way they're, I'm teaching them how to fish as opposed to giving them the fish. And so it's really just uh, understanding in your own leadership how you're leading, when when you're choosing to say something, when you're choosing not. This is why it's so important to move slowly so you can have time to hear the Holy Spirit. You know, usually somebody who's moving really, 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 really fast and they never have time and they're all over the place. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, they're it brings anxiety and stress and you can feel it come through, you know, and they're mostly focused on themselves. I got to make money. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. They're always thinking about the next thing and not being present with you. Right. So I might say things, you know, thank you for being present with me or, you know, um, you know, things like that. It just depends. I think everybody's different. There's no cookie cutter to it. The leadership role that he places people in I always tell people when they say, oh, I want to be when I grow up or whatever that is. First of all, I always say set yourself higher, set your goals higher. But second of all, you don't come out of the box this way. And no. I always <laughs> tell people that Jesus doesn't call the equipped in my experience. He equips the call. I know. <laughs> and every single time I find myself in a position of, oh, my gosh, whatever's happening Praise the Lord. This is in my office all the time. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. All things. Yeah. Not Catherine's things and little precious Catherine's going to teach us how to do everything. No, I can do all things through Christ. And the leadership role that he places people in, again, he doesn't call the equipped in my experience. He equips the call. Yeah. How do you get that message through to your business clients or any of your coaching clients, your consulting, I want to talk about your business in a second because you seldom ever, ever speak about that. And I <laughs> want to know more from the standpoint of who's a good client for you. But how do you get that equip the called thing um, to, to your, that you can tell there's a leadership in them somehow. How do you, how do you bring that forth? The first thing I have to think about that one. The first thing I do is I share with them the differences between the purpose, call and assignment. Uh, there's such a stress with people and their purpose. Uh, they're so nervous. They don't want to go and make a mistake. They don't want to go down a path and then kind of freak out like, oh, my gosh, you know, is. Do I have to rebuild or stop? And they self-sabotage because they want to please God, right? Or they want to build something significant, right? Legacy, whatever that looks like. And so I, I usually share with it that you have purpose, call, and assignment. So purpose is uh, Genesis. When you look at Genesis uh, 1, you're looking at it from a standpoint that you are uh, intimate with the Lord. Like he, he, he created you for intimacy. And then the... Uh, the subduing, the being fruitful, multiplying, that comes out of, okay? That comes out of that. So I correct them and I help them understand that they're, as long as they're in God and pursuing and having intimacy and relationship with God, that uh, they're already in their purpose, right? So the stress, like you'll see them like tense and then you'll be like, you'll see them like just breathe for a second. Like that's probably the first time they breathe and like, you know, took a breath in years. Okay. Like that kind of core breath. And so we have that. Then you have uh, their call. 
So their call is their divine summons, right? Their divine summons in the word is like, how do you see the word? So I always call you Dr. Kathy. So Dr. Kathy, prophetic in Jesus name. Um, so, you know, how do you see the word? Um, so I see it through leadership, uh, self-development, practical applications, applying it to your life. Uh, what does that look like to live it, breathe it, be in it? You might look at it as healing, restoration, relationships, all those type of aspects. Somebody might look at it through the eyes of family. Uh, some might finance, stewardship. Everybody looks at it. No matter what you do, where you go, I can still walk in that calling, whether I'm in the grocery store, whether I'm building a business, where I'm a stay-at-home mom, whether I'm with my husband, it doesn't matter, right? So it doesn't go away. That's how I perceive things. So that then takes the stress off of, do I do group coaching? Do I do, do, I do build a business? Do I do, I do, I do a ministry? Do I do? It doesn't really matter. Stop, just take a breath. And then I tell them about their assignment. Their assignment is how they choose to carry out that purpose, intimacy with the Lord, and their call. How do they choose to carry it out? Is it the assignment right now to build a business? Is it the assignment right now to do a networking group? Is it the assignment to author a book? Whatever that assignment is. And so that's how I first start off before I do anything else. Because they have to, if you don't understand that, like if just like you, you read the word of God and if you read in the beginning and you don't even believe in the beginning, then you might as well put the Bible down because you don't believe anything else after in the beginning. It's just what it is, right? And so- and I always say yet. Yes. They don't believe yet. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, that's the thing. I, I bring them through that transition. When they do that, there is such a relief. The anxiety goes away. The way that their perception is on a lot of different things, the stress of all the other things. And they look at everything now that they do as just a reflection of their intimacy with the Lord. And they draw on to him as opposed to saying, okay, what is the world telling me that I should do? And so that's usually how I address the, the first part of it. I love the fact when people say, it is just so random how we met. And I just let him <laughs> talk. I know, I love that. I, I just let him talk because I, eventually they're going to go, I was told that this and something that and something else this. And then they go, <laughs> maybe it was God. And yeah, I'm like, maybe. Because I, I literally, um, people have said to me before with my, all the networking and stuff that I do, honey, you can't build a relationship on a screen. Mm -hmm. And so my brain, of course, does that. And I just say, oh my gosh, that's so interesting. Tell me about that. By the time they tell me about that, we just built the relationship. Yeah. And it's always such a crack up to me because it's so random how we met and I go, that's, that's fascinating. Tell me, tell me how you feel the random piece. And obviously by the time we get to the end, it's like, maybe Jesus Christ actually did this, this communication. <laughs> part. Yes. And it's just the, how you get your clients, how you get the people that you bless, how you lead people to Christ, how you, the altar call piece. Now, Tanya, once again, I appreciate your um, intimacy and humility pieces. Yeah. The reason I wanted to have you so much on Kathy chat is because I want in my brain, I want the world to see the dynamic communication piece that you have with the Lord. I've seen it happen on some of our calls before. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, and you can tell that he's speaking. And tell us about how he communicates with you. Because it is powerful, impactful, amazing from the pieces I have gotten to witness. Hmm. <clears throat> How does he communicate with me? I'm just so grateful that he does. <laughs> um, wow. He rests on me depending on the situation. Uh, I, I, 
I have visions. Uh, I'll have dreams. Sometimes I'll just I'll I'll see a vision first over somebody, um, and then as I speak it, it just starts. This more starts being added. Uh, I love words. I love I have a relationship with words. Um, so when I read the word of God, it just draws me. I just I just go deeper. And so he'll sometimes bring to my remembrance things that I have read. And I'm like, Lord, you, you had me spend hours on that. It wasn't even for me. It was for somebody else. Like, it's so awesome how he works. But um, it's hard to explain it. There's times that I, I can't even speak. I have to sing. Um, there's times that uh, he, I, I feel like a quickening. I mean, there's, I, I, I think a lot of it has to just do with, I'm just so yielded. I just, uh, I really love him and I, and I just, I don't, I don't have an expectation or a thing that I say, God, talk to me only this way. I just, uh. You know, like when you when you when you love someone, like you're with your lover, um, you just they could touch you, they could uh, spend time with you, they could speak over you, and it doesn't even matter. Like there's no, you know what I mean? It's just you're with them. Like you just want to be so close to them. Have you ever heard it where ladies, they make jokes like when a lady's in love with you, like she just wants to be in your skin. <laughs> that's how close, like she can't be close enough to you. And that's just how I feel. So he just goes. And 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 he's over time, because I've been so open and I'm just like, Lord, I just want you. I just need, I like, I want more. Um, and I've allowed him, I've recognized when he's moving, I yield to it. Uh, so it just depends on whatever, I know how loving he is and it's actually quite interesting. It's like, it changes according to the person. Cause there's been times that he's just said, hug someone and I grab my arms and then they break down and weep. And that's all I need to do. It's just, be willing to be a vessel, right? So, you know, when it all comes down to it, um, he uses me, communicates uh, however the person in front of me needs to hear it. And I just say yes. That was a beautiful message for me. It is, uh, he hits me in the head with a brick. And uh, <laughs> because it is... Uh, Catherine, Catherine. And then, of course, I'm busy. I'm too busy, Lord. Thank you very much. I've got things to do. And so then I get the brick and it's like, oh, <laughs> sorry. And so the, I, your <laughs> transparency is beautiful because uh, it's one of those things when you have something fabulous, at least for me, when you have something fabulous, you want to share it with the world. You want everyone in the world to have the same thing. This is the most awesome something, or this is the most dynamic this, or this is the whatever. And you just go, oh my gosh, I'm going to get everybody one. This is just great. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that Jesus piece that's just like, you can almost tell that there's a er, disconnect, I call it, or actually a reverse polarity part is what I feel with the magnet stuff. Mm -hmm. When magnets work, they go like this. When magnets don't, there's a push. There's all that. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that there are some people that are pushing against it. And mm -hmm. I, I always just, you know, it's just, Lord, this is yours. There's not one single thing I can do without you. And when I wake up every day and say, thank you, Lord, I can walk and breathe at the same time. It's not funny. I've got friends that can't. Yeah. And it's just like, Lord, oh my gosh. And you're transparency to listen to him is beautiful. 
Um, my friends, thank you again for joining us today on Kathy Chat. I hope that you continue to be blessed by superstar Tanya Tanika. And I want, I said this was going to last for three days, and I think we probably need to stay on for three days. But <laughs> here's the deal. I Part want one, two, three, to, four, five. I know. We can't <laughs> count the time. I want you to please think about this for a second. You've been so open and amazing with your answers. Yeah. What is something that no one has ever asked you before mm. that you would like to answer? Whoa. Goodness. Uh, yeah, that that I definitely have to think about because I've I am so raw and real. Uh, <laughs> what you see is really what you get. Um, so if you were to meet me in person, this is on me, y'all. Um, <laughs> you know, sorry to disappoint, but uh, you ain't getting nothing much. Um, I'll break down and cry too, uh, just by saying the name. So, uh, but man, I'm just yeah. I don't know. That's such a good question because. I have, um, honestly, I just, uh, I've had some crazy conversations. I don't know. What is the question that you've always wanted to ask somebody that, uh, that maybe you never gotten to ask or that people have shied away from? I don't know. Um, well, when I uh, first thought about that uh, quite a few lots of years ago, yeah. there's always something back here that you want to share, but that wasn't the question. And obviously, sometimes when people ask a, this question, I answer this answer because this is what needs to happen. So I've done that before during my interviews yeah. and podcasts with other folks and things like that. But for me, most of the time, people want um, a personal story or a personal what does your life look like? Or what is a day in the life of Catherine? Whatever that is. And so for me, I answered that question for my second book. And he hit the clouds running and never looked back. And that journey piece, I usually answer by saying, um, rather than have me speak it, I actually read my book on my YouTube channel if you'd like to go there. So it's obviously not a sales pitch because it's free. But the rest of the story is sometimes the journey piece or the um, Jesus drives my bus part needs to be something they can hear again and again and again, because it might be speaking to them. And for you to be, in my, in my um, estimation, a, a bigger than life presence, I hope that you realize the mantle that he has on you and the the calling. And of course, I take notes when Tanya Tanika speaks. Fear is actually lack of love. And we are to be his vessels. And the purpose call and assignment part has so much to do with how we yield ourselves to him and his direction. And I think you're a beautiful example of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I guess in the back of my mind, uh, man, you got some good stumping questions. Um, I did not say Kathy chat was going to be easy. <laughs> I love it. I love every bit of it. Uh, I know it sounds so simple. Uh, but like, let God love you. Let him be father. Um, are there going to be times that you are frustrated and um, you don't believe maybe not in God, but that you're just so frustrated at how life is or that things are not um, playing out or however. Um, yeah, there's going to be moments. There's going to be times. It's not, it's not easy, but it's simple. Uh, and there's, 
there's a reward for intimacy with him. There really, really is. Uh, and the way that you love, the way that you are a nurturer and compassionate and tender, it wasn't a mistake. It's not a mistake. You are not a mistake. Um, he, he is, uh, I'm sure many can watch this and feel that he is tugging on your heart or you just want to be authentic. You, you want to be in this place of, I just want to know that I could fully be myself. But a lot of times we are not ourselves fully. We hide different compartments in different places because in order to be ourselves, we don't want to be rejected, right? Um, but when you find that love within God and there's a confidence within them, you realize that they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting really themselves. They're rejecting the part of God that is within you, right? Because when you have seen me, you have seen the Father, right? That's what my hope is always. And so, um, Think about it from that perspective. Uh, if, if I can say anything, uh, you're multi-gifted, multi-fashioned, multi-talented, because God is. <laughs> he is a creator. He is the creator. And so uh, I remember getting this quote from a mentor of mine. And it said, uh, she had said, you're a jack of all trades and a master of none, Tanya. So I used to like build and then self-sabotage because I'm like, well, I could do this and I could do that and I could go here. So every time I went to go build something and then I realized being commissioned the apostolic and prophetic, I'm like, oh, duh, I'm a builder. I operate as my mantle in the apostolic. I go places, I build and then I relinquish it. Uh, it's what I do. And when I realized that, I was like, uh, and I went to go teach it one day. And the quote actually goes, uh, a jack of all trades, God showed me, he's like, always be accurate. So go back and read it. So I went to go and it said, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. And it set me free. It set me free. And that is what I have spent. That's why I'm called like activator, because that's what I've spent. Um, I transitioned over, teach biblical principles now within business and ministry for leaders. And um, I help them understand the dimensions and the, the vastness and the beauty of who authentically God created them to be. And so, I don't know if that answered your question. It definitely no, will not be in the life of Tanya Tanika, but <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> it's my life. This is what I do. The activator piece is so huge because you definitely are. And business and ministry is your is your DNA from what I have seen. And you incorporate each into the other and not exclusively, as you mentioned, into this only today. We're going to talk about this only today. Jesus has thread in every single breath that we take, in my opinion. And it's so cool to see that not only do you live out your faith, but you're never, ever, ever, ever afraid to share it. And I appreciate you times a zillion to be on Kathy <laughs> Chat today. I'm glad I get to be here. It's fun times. <laughs> this is awesome. I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you get a glimpse, and I'm talking teensy glimpse into Tanya Tanika and her dynamic gifts and love of the Lord. And tanyatanika.com will be live just any second now, so stay tuned for that. And Tanya, I really seriously thank you for being on Kathy Chat today. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with our dynamic audience? Uh, no. Have an amazing day. Be blessed and uh, stay authentic. Stay authentic. I love that. Thank you, my friends, for joining us on Kathy Chat, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.